This time on Botany Basics, the guys show you how to use wiggle wire and frost cloth to protect your plants in winter. All right, I'm Eric from East Austin Succulents and we have Roy and Caden and we're getting our first freeze coming up and we're out in our rehab section but it's all cutting stock so we want to keep them alive um, and we will cover with two layers of freeze cloth and we figure each layer adds about three degrees so if you're getting to 32 this will bring you up to 35 and a second layer might bring you up to 38. We are lucky to be right against a greenhouse right here. This is a great side to have this uh, because it, it's blocked from the north wind. So the north is that way and this way, um, that cold air that comes through that isn't hitting this. Plus the warmth of the greenhouse does keep these a little bit warmer. So we're working with wiggle wire. And if you've worked with it a lot, it's really easy and you can just fly. So we are going to um, add, um, we're gonna get our freeze cloth and we're gonna attach it to here so that it can lay over the plants and then we're gonna clamp it also. So here we have the first layer of wiggle wire. Uh, this is holding down our greenhouse plastic. Um, that makes it easier whenever you have to change your greenhouse plastic. Now there is enough room for uh, the second layer to hold in the freeze cloth. When we're working with wiggle wire, I don't want this first tip end in because then it's really hard. It's hard to get in in the first place. It's also hard to get back out when you want to undo it. So I will leave that first thing loose and I'll get this second one. It just is gonna pop in. I'm glad we got ahead of the weather because when you're doing this when it's cold and rainy, it's a lot tougher on your hands. Your thumb just starts aching real, real bad. But okay, you see how I'm, sometimes I hit things that suck. So I'm just gonna have to skip that spot and I'm gonna try and get under that piece and then I'm gonna leave that loose there so it can get undone. Otherwise you need a pair of scissors to get it out. It's also important to remember that, you know, wear safety glasses because the end of the wiggle wire as you're doing it can be flopping around. You just uh, gotta make sure that you don't poke okay, yourself in the eye or somebody else. Okay. Most of this stuff that's out here is uh, grafting stock or it, it can take, you know, 32, a lot of this stuff was actually outside when it was eight degrees or five degrees here. And what we did then was we covered the plants underneath with two layers. And then we had this rolled up all, uh, all winter and we rolled that down. So that was four layers of protection. Um, now when it was covered in snow, I didn't take the snow off because actually the snow helped insulate it and keep it a little warmer, believe it or not. It was so cold at the time and we had really good success but if you're in a bind you know even if you have plants in a greenhouse you can still get really cold so you can use freeze cloth inside your greenhouse to add a few degrees if you're trust if you don't trust your heaters or it, they're just not keeping it warm enough and um, we only worry about 32 degrees for most of our plants but we worry about 40 degrees when it comes to leafy stuff like a lot of euphorbias Definitely Sansevierias, a lot of adeniums will get damaged under 40. So really we're worried about 32 degrees, but we try to keep things above 40 because we have so many of those leafy plants that'll just get ugly. They won't die at 40, but they'll get pretty ugly. And, and with a Sansevieria, sometimes your best Sansevierias just have like two leaves. So if you get frost damage on one leaf, it just looks terrible. So Sansevierias are the hardest to protect in the winter. Uh, so as you can see, we've got some holes here. Uh, the, I guess the squirrel fan was installed wrong. You're just supposed to cut through one thing. And the plastic is getting pretty old. And my cat crawl, crawls up and down here all the time. But um, this is Tyvek tape. Tyvek tape is the only tape you need in winter. I have it on my wrist. It's like a bracelet all winter because you're always repairing things like this with Tyvek because it's waterproof. You know, not, duct tape and packing tape won't, won't last a week. This is like for insulation jobs and everything, but every grower needs Tyvek everywhere because uh, we use it for so many things.
I'm just going to do a brief thing about heaters. Um, in our big houses, we have big Modines, and those are wonderful. But in your smaller houses, you have a lot of different options. These, we, we just call these toppers. You can get them at Home Depot. They just screw right into the, the thing, and then you hold the ignition down and, and light it, and you keep holding it, holding it, holding it until this whole thing is orange, and then you let go, and it's lit. The problem with these, uh, they don't have a thermostat, so they just stay on all night or you know, whenever you turn them off or when this thing is empty. But these are really our saviors. I buy like 20 of them at the beginning of the winter and they don't require power. So if you have a power outage, you need these as a backup. Um, we do have one of these space heaters in each house. They require electricity. They're th on a thermostat. They're wonderful. They, they kind of force air, but not really. Uh, if you want to force air, you can just put a little fan by it. And we have these in each each house and we have these attached to the size of propane tank that you can fit on a dolly you can have them inside or outside of the house we have them outside so that um, we have more space there is uh, some philosophy like if it's gonna get too cold then your regulator might freeze and you should bring them in but I don't think that helps us too much and these have an igniter um, so you don't really you don't need a lighter but sometimes your igniter isn't good so we do have we keep lighters in the house anyway and they have a thermostat so they come on and off my biggest uh, problem with, with these is they have an oxygen depletion center so in our smaller greenhouses we have Obama Bernie and Clinton over there and the, the they're really short houses so once it's depleted uh, enough oxygen they just kick off the pilot goes out so you have to go at 3 in the morning and open the door let it air out a little bit let some of that freezing cold air in and then light it again so I love these things and I hate them in a small house in a house like this it's great this is our this is one of our carport greenhouses so the the roof is really high so if anybody has any suggestions on heaters that don't have oxygen depletion sensors that would be great. I'd appreciate it. All right, so our best friend in the wintertime, other than the heaters, are the clamps. Uh, what we're gonna do, because you know, a lot of times we have warm weather in the middle of winter, and um, we gotta roll this thing up. So it helps to have an extra hand. And what we wanna do is roll it up as tight as possible uh, so that the plants all the way up against the greenhouse can, can get light as well. So roll this up tight like this. And this is where it's gonna live whenever it's not freezing, just like that. It doesn't really matter with this freeze cloth, which way you roll it, whether you roll it inwards or outwards. Um, it does matter when you're doing plastic because when you roll it outwards, the plastic will catch rainwater. Um, when you roll it inwards, you know, still a little bit of water gets in there, but not as much. And it's ready to go. So we're gonna uh, cover our planters today because we've got a full week of freezes. We're getting into like 15. So most of this stuff out, out here is uh, cold hardy or borderline cold hardy, but we don't want damage. So we're gonna cover with a few layers of freeze cloth. First, we're gonna put some cups over the things that we really care about. Styrofoam is better for trichos. It's more insulating, but it's kind of expensive and they don't last as long because they're um, and they're not biodegradable, so we don't like to use too many of these. We can use plastic cups too, they're not as good. And we'll use a bunch of clamps. You know, these metal clamps are way better than plastic clamps. And we've got a lot of rocks to just weigh, weigh the freeze cloth down. You gotta plan for wind. And we'll probably lose some stuff. Martillo cactus don't do well outside and really, really cold, even if you triple cover them. So uh, we don't, really don't have many Martillo cactus and in here anymore. And Pilo we don't do Pilo out here anymore. And when we're covering, you know, if something like this is too big over here, we'll just cut the leaves off and yeah. they'll grow back in the summertime. Yeah, um, and you could just cut some chips off if you know they're gonna be in your way. Yeah. You know? Well, yeah, so let's get started. This is a little high. Kind of want the freeze cloth to stay around here. All right, so this guy isn't gonna make it through the cold. Um, we might as well just snap it actually, but it's pretty right now so we can enjoy it. This is my favorite plant out here. This is the variegated Opuntia robusta. I'm gonna, you know, do another, just a layer. Cause he's a real treasure.
Okay, you ready? All right. You don't want or any holes or gaps where the air can get in. Um, so that's why we came through and we've, we've got all these clamps. And so wherever, you know, we get behind a post or something and it's kind of weird, we can clamp it into the, the board. Took three people, four people about 30 minutes, wasn't a problem. Now you may be wondering about how the light is under here and it's actually not terrible. Uh, light still gets through this. It's like a big soft box. So the cactus should be totally fine. Well, that's pretty much, that's pretty much it. Now we just have to pray <laughs> that they don't freaking get frozen. Look, Cookie helps. <laughs> cookie, give me the ball. Come on. All right, so it's been a few days since the freeze. It did get down to 15 degrees here. Um, now we did our best to cover, uh, but we still had a little bit of damage on some of the agaves. Um, and what one of my buddies that grows a lot of agaves recommended is just leave those damaged leaves on there. And also, if you look right here, the pups are fine down here, but if you look closely, you can see the damage that we had on this. But again, the center is good. So what we're gonna do is just let this dry up, and in the springtime, we'll cut it back. Uh, the pups will grow better, and so it's not a total loss. Now sometimes, um, when you hear about a plant being cold hardy, it might still get damaged. So I'm happy to see that these astrophytums actually did pretty well. 15 degrees, all these plants did just fine the way we covered them. Uh, check out this Trichoceras here. Um, we covered these with the cups and the tips are fine. This Euphorbia, just fine. Took the cold, um, you know, again, more astros. So here we go, these little mammalarias. I grew these from seed about four or five years ago. Um, but they did just fine. Sadly, our Neobooks Mamias uh, did not like the cold. Um, also, they're right here on the edge. And so I'm thinking that the wind or air got in right here when we covered. Um, cold air was getting in here, and so you can see that these plants that are right here on the edge um, didn't do as well. I mean, yeah, it's kind of sad. Maybe, maybe it could have come back from the bottom, but we'll just throw those away and start up, try again. All right, so now this Apuntia right here, you can tell that it's not making it because it's just clear. Um, it's, it's lost a lot of life, and so we're gonna take this guy out of here. Um, but actually the root, or yeah, the root for the base seems okay, so we'll just chop it back and leave the base in the ground. You can see this is still solid down here. All right, um, this guy, he had a little bit of a hard time. This guy, again, on the edge, a little bit of a hard time. Uh, but it, it might still come back, we'll see. These were not individually wrapped. And again, if you want to help your plants survive, you want to individually wrap them. All right, so this is not variegation. This happens when the plant gets too cold and then again, it gets too hot. So what happened in here was, uh, maybe I thought it was cold outside, so I didn't open it, but it holds all the heat from the sun. And so really it just cooked this plant. Um, it'll come back but it's gonna have the damage. This euphorbia right here, now I know that this is not really cold hardy because same thing happened to it. It got sunburn. So airflow and shade will help you um, recuperate your plants from the cold. This little house got a little bit colder than I wanted it to, um, but if I had opened it up and let airflow and maybe put a shade cloth over it, we wouldn't have had the same kind of damage. Obviously, if I had kept it warmer, wouldn't have the same damage um, but yeah that's what happens when it's too cold and then too hot these guys are right up front we get uh, cold air coming right down the street and just pushing against these guys uh, during the snow apocalypse a few years ago when it got down to five degrees these were actually covered in snow so that actually helped insulate them but this time there was no snow to help insulate them so all that cold air was just blowing right on these trichos uh, and the damage is all on this side so what I would recommend is getting a piece of uh, polygal plastic and just put it up against here to act like a shield uh, and that would help but yeah these guys they had made it through before maybe they'll come back from the base some of them are okay but um, really we didn't even use cups on these guys but uh, you know it's a learning experience and insulation from snow actually does help Make sure to like and subscribe Botany Basics and follow East Austin Succulents and Fireproof Plants on Instagram.